Hello oh, and welcome to the Dan Cave and welcome to the video build series for the Tamiya 12th scale Suzuki GSX RR Moto GP bike. Uh, so this is part one of the series. Uh, so there is an inbox review already on the channel from a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, we're now going to get into the actual video build series. So we're going to start with part one, funnily enough. Uh, could have started with part two, but that would probably confuse me more so than everybody else. But part one, the obvious starting place. So what, what's part one going to cover? So part one is going to cover... I'm not 100% sure. Because I've got quite a lot of footage. So part one is going to cover definitely a clean up of the bodywork. Uh, a little bit of gluing. There's a little bit of filling that I had to do on it. And a little bit of rescribing. Because I kind of messed up a little bit of it. So, so it's going to focus on that. Definitely get some of the primer work. And I think it'll definitely cover the paint work. Whether it goes beyond that. I don't know. Because I've decided to record the intro and outro. A little bit in advance. Because I'm going away on holiday soon. And I wanted some footage that I could. Get some editing done on while I'm away. Uh, so I'm recording this slightly in advance. Of, of things happening. So a little bit out of order. But this is part one. It'll cover some of the things i just said uh if it covers any more than that i'll probably put some text in to say I'm not quite truthful i'm actually covering this if it's covering less i'll probably do the same as well you never know uh so this is the intro for part one uh so yeah so if you're new here please subscribe uh click the bell notification as well you'll get notified of when each of the parts comes out etc if you like the video please give a thumbs up please give a like if you have any comments stick them in the comment box below so without further ado let's head on over and start this build series off uh, of the suzuki so uh yeah let's crack on with it so once again welcome to part one this is the box which I'm now magically opening. Uh, and this is where the fun begins. So as uh, as covered in the intro, the part one's gonna cover mainly the bodywork. Uh mainly well, getting that up to the painted process or painted stage at least. So so there is a full inbox review on this from, from earlier in the year, so I'm not going to cover too much. So we know we're starting with the bodywork. Uh, for me, one of the first key parts is to go through and mark off everything on the instruction sheet that needs to be body colored. And then we can start clipping those parts from their respective sprues and cleaning up any seam lines. Uh, there's not a huge amount on this kit. I'll be quite honest, it's incredibly clean. Uh, if you watch the inbox review, I, I kind of sing its praises quite a lot. However, there is a number of assembly steps uh, for this. So, you know, things like the front fender coming to parts. Uh, there are some sprue attachment points on the front part of the fairing. They require a little bit of cleanup using some uh, UMP thinny sticks and uh, sponge sander as well or thinny sander so a little bit careful work go around spot any seam lines uh easy enough to clean up on this kit plastic is nice to work with and any of those sprue attachment points just clean the back down Use your fingernail to check for any kind of raised edges. And once you're happy that it's all sanded back, you can then buff that off using a thinny buffer, as I'm using here. So front fender, as is kind of front hugger, mudguard, whatever you want to call it, as is kind of standard in all these kits, and two separate parts. So a little bit of tammy extra thin just to run into it. Now... It's quite an old bottle of extra thin. I don't think it's quite melting the plastic as I kind of normally like on these seams. So I'm not quite getting that kind of molten bead 
along the edge so as we'll see later we'll come back there is a little bit of filling to do on the seam on those parts so there's quite a lot of separate fairing pieces on this kit uh and, and when you get mainly you know into the paint stage and decal stage you'll see where the challenges lie with this it's very useful from a seam line point of view there's not many uh, kind of seams that shouldn't be there most of the panel gaps on the panels are exactly where they are on the real bike so that's quite useful so the i suppose the rear part of the fairing and the seat that comes in two separate parts there is this insert piece that goes between them uh i I suppose in some ways this is quite good because it does give it quite a lot of structure and rigidity uh, and that helps secure it quite well. So once again, it's it's the Tammy Extra Thin is the adhesive of choice in this case. And of course that will just run into the gaps via capillary action and will perfectly secure it. So once it's in place, a little bit of a squeeze. So at the moment, I've just glued that kind of transverse insert piece. And now just run a little bit of extra thin along the seam line. So there's no real pressure needed on these to hold these parts together. Uh, th there's no kind of warpage or anything like that. They, they fit absolutely perfectly. And then there's a couple more pieces which go on, which form that kind of rear, uh, rear seat hump. Now, on some of these joints, some of these joints are natural seam lines, natural kind of panel gaps. Uh, so you do need to be a little bit careful. As it turned out on that piece of just glued, I wasn't. Uh, and I will need to go back and do some work on that a little bit later. Uh, so bottom fairing, that comes in two parts, quite similar to a lot of the bikes from Tamiya. Once again, a little bit of extra thin. And once again, I don't quite get that little bead of kind of mold and plastic because uh, that's really useful for cleaning up seam lines. Uh, so this part will need a little bit of remedial work just to eliminate any kind of seam gap. And then there's one final piece which sits underneath just like so. Once again, a little bit of extra thin that just runs into the, into the gaps. So once that's given a good, oh, good 24 hours to cure, uh, it's time to come back with some UMP sanders. So I kind of already know at this stage that there is a little bit of filling work needed, but it's always worth doing a little bit of sanding just to sand it back just to see the extent. Uh, in this case, I've kind of sanded it back now and buffing it off and you can and I can see exactly where there's a little bit of a seam line that needs some attention. And as you can see, that seam line is going to be addressed by some well, yellow sprue mixed with Tammy Extra Thin, the infamous sprue goo. Uh, so it's quite thin, the mix I've got here. Uh, I'm using yellow because yellow is quite an obvious, easy to see color. Everything's going to be prime black anyway, so it's not it's not an issue. It's not like it's going to be painted white and the yellow will show through. Uh, in this case, it's going to be primed in black anyway for a metallic. Uh, so the front hogger that's got similar attention required. So it's pretty much a case of kind of painting it on. It's a very shallow seam on these parts. There's not a huge amount of remedial work needed, but it's just a tiny little bit of uh, 
material that's needed to fill that gap. As you can see, I'm also using a cocktail stick for where there's a slightly bigger gap, just to deposit a little bit more material than I was getting with the brush. So time to address some of the other seams. Kind of working it, I won't say methodically, I'm kind of doing piece by piece. Uh, kind of checking the seam work as I go. As you can see, I've, I've already addressed the seams on two of the parts, the bottom fairing and the front fender. This kind of rear fairing and seat. Uh, similar amount of effort. And sadly, also my head getting in the way. So, so this was either a, a lucky break uh, for me or an opportunity miss. So, so this is where I did make a mistake. Uh, I did kind of ruin what was a natural panel gap. So I've had to refill that with sprue goo, which has been done. It's been allowed to set for a number of days. And now I'm just sanding that back flush. So once I get that back to a flush line, uh, I'm going to have to rescribe that seam line had i glued a little bit more carefully that would have been easy there would have been no work required however i didn't so i need to use some of this uh scribing guide tape uh, from high q just kind of laying it down over where the panel line should be just carefully working it into place making sure it follows exactly where i need it to follow Make sure it's nicely burnished down. We don't need to detack it because there's no paint to remove. And once I'm kind of happy with where that is, uh, it's, I'm using one of the Tamiya scribing tools. Uh, I think it's a 0.23 millimeter one, I believe. But just using that to follow along that scribing guide tape, and that produces. An acceptable panel line. Uh, I think the original one looked better if it was done properly. Sadly, that wasn't the case. So I kind of screwed it up, so I had to go back and fix it. So once that line has been scribed, just using a sander, just just to make sure that there's no kind of sharp edges on it, and then buff it back. So with that fixed, we can go back to some of the earlier sprue goo we did on the bottom fairing uh, and just get out the sanders again and sand that back. Uh, of course, you know, sprue goo, once it's completely dried, it's got the same consistency as the plastic anyway, so it's easy enough to work with. Just trying to make sure it's nicely blended in. Uh, obviously, on something like the front hogger, you want to make sure you don't square off uh, the profile of that. So you're trying to keep as much of a curve on that as you possibly can. This is where the softer sponge sanders and sponge thinny sticks come in because they will help conform to that curve. And once I'm happy with what's been taken off, I can go back in with the uh, with the buffer to sort that out. So now so that all that body work is sorted, it's over to Spray Booth. UMP Black, that's the primer of choice. Uh, using UMP Apex at about 30 PSI. And we can start priming some parts. Uh, so this under seat fairing, uh, this is black on the scheme I'm doing. So that gets painted along with everything else at this stage. Body panels themselves, they are all going to be primed in black. Uh, starting off with a fairly light dust coat. That essentially kind of gives uh, certainly no chance of any paint runs. Uh, it gives a very light coat, which helps the next and, and well subsequent coats adhere a little bit better. Do the same on basically all the parts on the bottom fairing part. 
making sure I get all the angles as well, getting around all the edges. Uh, in the case of front fairing, trying to get as much of the inside as, as, as I can as well. And as you can see, once I settle into a little bit of a rhythm, the pace of spraying tends to pick up. And then before we know it, we are quickly on to coat number two. So that's where you can go a little bit heavier. UMP Black is very, very forgiving. The only time I find it's less forgiving is on that first coat. Uh, I do try and keep quite a light coat for the first coat. Once that's down, you can go a little bit heavier. And certainly for me, I tend to go a lot faster once that first coat is down. As you can see, just working around all the angles, all the interior, and then we can start doing the main outside. I'm going to speed it all up at this stage because, well, it's just priming. All in all, I think I end up with a total of three coats of black primer. Although I get faster, I don't get this fast. This is at eight times speed. And this is on, yeah, this is on the third and final coat. Yeah, and that's all going down very, very nicely. We get a nice, smooth, almost matte black finish. That's a perfect base. So once that's given about uh, 24 hours to cure fully, I'm going to use zero paints, uh, specific paint set for this color scheme. So we're going to start with the silver and basically everything's going to get painted silver. So zero paints are a lacquer paint. They are renowned for being hot. So the best approach with these is very thin, very light coat. Uh, I think all in all, I'm going to cover possibly about six coats. So once again, just me doing six very very light coats but i'm going to show as much as i can however you don't want to listen to me talking about it so i'm going to stick on some background music and i think i speed it up as well so sit back and see six coats of paint go down very very quickly So that is six coats of silver done. So next step is masking. Uh, so 
I've got these TB decals uh, to cover the 2021 bike. So the blue and the silver are the same color. There's a slightly different scheme uh, for this bike. It's ever so slightly different from the previous year's bike. So in, in the kit, uh, there is a mask set, so it's not pre-cut. Uh, luckily enough, my uh, very dear friend at Scale Motor, Luke Ward, provided me uh, a set of masks pre-cut. Uh, so the standard masks go on the rear fairing. As you can see, I'm having a look at the differences on the side fairing for the 2021 bike. So as you can see, it is it is similar. But there is a slight different demarcation for the blue, plus that bottom part of the fairing is in black. So for the main front fairing, uh, I'm able to modify some of the, the Tamiya supplied masks uh, to cut the straight demarcation that this 2021 bike has. Uh, for side fairings, it's more of a case of well, just kind of cutting bits of masking tape to, to work out the pattern that is on that bike. Uh, so it's easy enough to figure out from the pictures. Uh, the demarcations are different, but you can kind of tell from the pictures where they need to go. And also a little bit of measuring, make sure they're symmetrical on both sides. So once all that masking is done, it's back over to the spray booth. And it's time to start putting down that metallic blue paint over the silver. Uh, so once again, might as well speed all this up and stick a little bit of music on and uh, enjoy the paint process. Before speeding it up and before adding any music, etc. Same process as the with the silver. Light coats zero paints they are known for being hot so build up those coats nice and slowly uh, i think i do about three or four coats uh coverage is actually pretty good with with this batch of zero paints but again they're relatively light coats so cue the music So with all that painting done, it's time to get on masking. Uh, now, I stuck in at the end of the airbrush sequence doing the black on the bottom fairing. You can see it's still blue in this shot, the unmasking. 
because uh, obviously there's a little bit of masking to go on that to go back in to do the black. So this is a little bit out of sequence. Uh, but to finish the video, I thought, you know, a key step to finish it is unmasking the main kind of blue silver demarcation, which is what I'm doing right now uh, with this rear fairing part. So obviously relatively careful. You don't want to lift any paint, uh, but it should be all good. A little bit of a piece kind of stuck around the edge of that fairing. But uh, yeah, gently lift it off. It was all detacked before it went on anyway. Uh, so it should be pretty safe and secure. So th this is getting to the end of this video. Uh, that's why I'm going to finish at the painted stage. So part one will cover up until basically this point, until I get the last of this unmasking done. Uh, then I'll go back to me for a final summary. Uh, so I think in some ways this video is ending up about 30 odd minutes long. Uh, Whereas I think had I covered decals in 2K, I probably wouldn't have ended up with a video at about 35 or 40 minutes. So I think this has allowed me to kind of show the paint process a little bit more in depth. Uh, it's kind of showing all the coats go down, albeit speeded up, but you know it's still all there to show exactly how uh, the paint colors have gone on and gone down. So hopefully when as this progresses as a build series, uh, we'll kind of keep that level of kind of detail in there. So maybe slightly different from previous builds I've done. Uh, this will be a little bit more in depth, possibly. Probably similar to what I did with the, the other Suzuki Moto GP bike I did last year, uh, the 500 uh, RGV Gamma, which was a little bit more in depth in some ways. But, you know, I will say, you know, this kind of as a build, did, a lot of this work was done quite a while ago. The build itself has stalled a little bit because uh, I wanted to get the videos done before I progressed on to uh, the rest of the video parts. So now that part one is out there, uh, part two will get into editing pretty much straight away. Uh, so part two will come out fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, and that will free me up to actually start working on the next part to be part three which is probably going to start work on the engine i would imagine so i'm going to try and step through it a little bit more methodically maybe even more so than what i did with the uh with the suzuki which i think went to five parts in the end so this may end up with a few more but who knows how things progress but as you can see uh all that masking tape has come off it seems to have no real issues uh, no massive amounts of bleed through, nice clean demarcations. Uh, and that'll be left to cure for probably at least 24 hours before I start the decals from recollection. Uh, and that kind of decal and 2K process will be covered in the next part, which, you know, as a standalone part may end up a little bit shorter uh, than this, but at least it covers it. So let's head back over to me. So there we go. There's... Uh... That's part one of the series done. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made on it. It's a lovely kit. And yes, I am sat here in a Yamaha Valentino Rossi MotoGP top while building a Suzuki. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm really impressed with this kit from Tamiya. It's really nice. Uh, as mentioned in the kind of kind of start of and build up to it and uh, in a slightly different scheme from uh the standard box scheme uh because that of course uh covers the 2019 bike i'm doing the 2020 bike no that covers the they did the 2020, I'm doing the 2021, yes, I'm doing the 2021 bike. The 2020 bike is in the box. That's it. Well, that was hard work for my head. But yeah, so I'm doing a slightly different scheme from the box. So I've got some aftermarket decals uh, for that. So you've seen 
some of the little kind of changes I've had to do to cover that. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully part two will follow very, very quickly because I've got all the footage I think I need. Uh, just need to kind of edit it and such. So this is the first part that I've managed to edit. But how's ever, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're a new, new subscriber, please subscribe. If you're new here and you're not a subscriber is what I meant to say, please subscribe. Uh, click the like button if you like the video and feel free to leave a comment or a question in the box below. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back with part two very soon. As ever, let's, uh, let's cut on that and uh, look forward to the next part and seeing you back here uh, very, very soon. So thank you for watching. Thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, we'll catch you all later. Bye bye for now.